What is going on, wonderful people? It's Medicosis Perfectionalis. Welcome back to my physics playlist. In previous videos, we talked about how to read a graph in physics. We talked about the meaning of the slope. We talked about kinematics, scalars versus vectors, distance versus displacement, speed versus velocity, mass versus weight. We talked about acceleration. We talked about work. We talked about torque. We talked about energy. We talked about heat and temperature. We also talked about magnetism in the previous video. Today, we will focus on the topic of electromotive force, which is not actually a force. It is a voltage. It's an electric potential difference, not a volt. So it's a misnomer to start with, but it's stuck. Just like the name myasthenia gravis. It's not accurate, but it's stuck. Today we'll learn about the difference between connecting electric cells or batteries in series versus connecting them in parallel. Click the like button, click the subscribe button and let's get started. This is my physics playlist. Please watch these videos in order for maximum understanding and retention, not to be confused with mechanical retention. What is electromotive force? Well, let's suppose that this circuit is open. So there is no charge moving. Whatever the electric potential difference or the voltage is, is now called electromotive force, abbreviated mph or with this Greek symbol, which is called epsilon. The electromotive force is not actually a force. It is an electric potential difference. It is a voltage. We're gonna suppose that we have a group of electric cells. Here's the first, the second, and the third, and they are connected in series like this, one after the other after the other. If you want the electromotive force for the entire whole thing, the entire battery, you simply add the electromotive force for this to this to this. Add them all together, you get the electromotive force for the entire battery. Example, let's suppose that this is 1.5 volts, this is 1.5 volts, and this is 1.5 volts. What is the oomph for the entire battery? Well, the electromotive force for the entire battery equals 1.5 plus 1.5 plus 1.5 equals 4.5 volts because electromotive force is a voltage. It is measured in volts. If all of your electric cells are identical, for example, 1.5 volts, 1.5 volts, and 1.5 volts, you can simply simplify this into this. The electromotive force for the entire battery equals the number of cells multiplied by the electromotive force of each electrical cell. So in this case, it will be three because I have three cells multiplied by the voltage of each, which is 1.5. Three multiplied by 1.5 will give you the same result, which is 4.5 volts. But what if we have a group of identical electrical cells, but this time they are connected in parallel, not in series? Not like this in series, but in parallel, one on top of the other, on top of the other, and usually they share origins on the left and on the right. In this case, the electromotive force for the entire battery equals the electromotive force of just one cell. Example, if this is 1.5 volts, 1.5 volts, and this cell is 1.5 volts, then the electromotive force for the entire battery is 1.5 volts. Let's practice what we preach. If the electromotive force of each electric dry cell is 1.5 volt, what is the reading of the voltmeter in each case? In case 1, in case 2, and in case 3. Please pause the video and try to solve this yourself. All right, for scenario number one, it's a piece of cake. The electromotive force for the entire battery equals 1.5 plus 1.5 plus 1.5, or you can say 3 multiplied by 1.5, and the total oomph for the entire battery is 4.5 volts. Next, case number two. Well, the first one is easy, that's 1.5, and then it's connected in series to this entire thing, so I'm going to say plus. And then since these two are connected in parallel, you only take one of them, which is 1.5, for a total voltage of 3 volts for this question. How about the third one? Well, I have two connected in parallel on the left and two connected in parallel on the right, but both sets are connected in series together. Since they are connected in series, I will add a plus sign in the middle. Let's take care of the left half. 1.5, 1.5, you only take one of them, or 1.5 volts. And on the right, it's same thing, 1.5, 1.5, you only take one of them, which is 1.5 volts. 1.5 plus 1.5 equals 3 volts. So, in other words, if you are an electric engineer, and if you want to boost the electromotive force for your battery, connect the cells in series. 
If you do not want to boost it, simply connect them in parallel. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, please drop a battery emoji in the comments. Here is another question for you. Raj has three electric cells. Here is one, two, and three. The electromotive force of each one of them is 1.5 volts. He connected them in a certain manner. Then he drew a graph to represent the number of cells and the electromotive force. The graph is shown here. The question is, how did Raj connect the three cells? Is it in manner A, in manner B, or in manner C? Pause the video, try to solve it yourself. Well, as you see here, Raj keeps connecting the cells. Here's the first cell, the second cell, the third cell, it doesn't matter. The more cells he adds, nothing happens to the mth. So the total electromotive force for the battery did not change, which means that Raj must be connecting them in parallel. If you connect in parallel, you can add one, two, you can add three, you can even add the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, it's not gonna matter. If they are all connected in parallel, then by definition, the electromotive force for the entire battery is simply the electromotive force of one of them, which is always 1.5 volts. Here's the third question for you. The multiplicity of connected electric posts together in parallel between two points leads to what? Is it A, doubling of the potential difference, or B, decreasing the potential difference, C, decreasing the electric current magnitude, D, increase electric current magnitude, or no change in the electric current magnitude? Please let me know your answer in the comments. I'll tell you where to find the answer key in a moment. Question 4. Rearrange the following circuits in descending order, according to the value of the intensity of the electric current flowing in each knowing that the electromotive force for each cell is 3 volts. Let me know your answer in the comments. Number 5. Calculate the number of electric cells which form a battery whose electromotive force is 9 volts, knowing that the electromotive force for each electric cell is 1.5 volts, and that the battery contains two electric cells only that are connected in parallel, and the rest are connected in series. How can we do it so that they all add up to 9 volts? This is how we do it. So only two electric cells are connected in parallel. Let's start with that. Okay, this is the first one. And here is the second one. And they are connected in parallel. Then everything else is in series. But in order for them to add up to 9, let's calculate. These are connected in parallel. So you just take one of them, 1.5 volts. Then we're going to add the next one. And add 1.5 volts. And we're going to add a next one. Add 1.5 volts. Then add another one. 1.5 volts. Let's see where we at. 1.5 times 4 is 6, but I need 9. So I need 2 more. Here is 1.5 and here is 1.5. If you add all of these doozies together, you get 9 volts. This is 3, this is 3, this is 3. 3 plus 3 plus 3 is 9 volts. So this is how you connect your circuit. It's gonna be beautiful. So basically you do two in parallel and five in series. How many did we use? We used a total of seven electric cells. Pause and review. And here is one more. If the first resistor has a resistance of three ohm, the second resistor is two ohm, both are connected in this manner, and the potential difference between the terminals of R1, which is measured by the voltmeter, is six volts. Please calculate the magnitude of the electric current passing through R1, the amount of electricity passing through a certain point of the circuit in one minute, and if the voltmeter is connected to terminal 2 or R2 instead of R1, what will be the voltmeter's reading in this second case? Let me know your answers in the comments. You will find the answer key to all of the questions in today's video in my video titled Electric Currents, Voltage, Power, Resistance, and Capacitance, which you can find in this physics playlist. This video will teach you how to connect resistors in series and in parallel, and the same thing with capacitors. If you want to download these notes, go to metagosisperfectionaries.com. I have notes for physics, notes for biology, general chemistry, organic chemistry, biochemistry, anatomy, physiology, you name it. Check out my other playlists as well. Help me make more videos by supporting the channel. Go to buymeacoffee.com slash metacosis. There are more than 600 premium videos available on this channel when you click the join button and choose the highest tier. Please subscribe, hit the bell, smash like, support my channel on Patreon, PayPal, or Venmo. 
go to my website to download my courses, notes, and cases, or if you would like me to personally tutor you. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine, chemistry, math, and physics make perfect sense.